Hey guys, welcome to this week's Monday discussion. Today I want to talk about a topic that I'm very passionate about, which is analog versus digital. Are plugins ruining your mixes? Do you need expensive analog gear to make a good sounding song? Will AI eventually take over the whole world of music production? This and more in today's video. Let's do it. So, is analog better than digital? The short answer is no. The long answer is yes, absolutely, but we have to consider a few things. Is this difference going to make or break our record? No. Is this difference going to be the deciding factor whether we sell a hundred albums or a million? Absolutely not. Is the audio quality going to be significantly different between analog and digital? Also, absolutely not. So where are the differences actually? I have mixed a lot of songs both on analog desks and in the box, and to me the difference boils down to following factors. Number one, the tactile feel of having faders and knobs in front of you gives you a completely different experience in mixing. It is much more intimate and it is much more immediate and you don't have to rely that much on using your eyes to synchronize the movements together. It is easier to mix with your eyes closed and adjust those parameters with your hands. Which brings us to number two. Typically in analog studios, where you have a big console, you do not have a screen in front of you. So you tend to mix much less with your eyes and much more with your ears. This is something I can definitely tell you that I've experienced. When I mix here in my studio, even though it is lovely sounding and the kit is pretty good, I do tend to rely a lot on my ears when I mix instead of just listening. So I have to force myself much more to close my eyes, to use my ears, but because I have a mouse, I have to look a lot more because some small adjustments, you really have to focus to find the small knobs, the small faders, move the regions gently. So you have to rely a lot more on your eyes. Number three, analog gear, especially say a console EQ, tends to have much less or sometimes even no metering. So you don't worry as much about the final EQ curve that you have created. You just do what you have to do and if it sounds good, it sounds good. A lot of times I notice that when I have digital EQs in front of me, that if I do something that looks outrageous, I will immediately question myself whether that's a good or a bad adjustment. Whereas in the analog world, I would not care about it. I would just ask myself, does it sound good? Yes or no. If it sounds good, let's move on. Number four, analog studios with real consoles tend to have better acoustics. That's because they have already gone through the investment process of buying a large console and therefore they want to make sure that everything around it is also very good. This doesn't necessarily have to do with only analog versus digital, but usually if you have an analog studio, you will have really good acoustics, which means that you'll hear much better what you're doing, which will lead to better mixes. Number five, and this is the most important, Mixing in the analog domain requires a completely different mindset. If you hire a studio with an expensive console with expensive gear, usually you will have a finite time that you can spend in that studio. So that means you're working towards a definite deadline by which you definitely have to get that mix done. And I noticed this a lot when I worked in analog studios, I knew that I would have one, maybe two days to mix a song. I would not be able to go back, I would not be able to recall the mix, I would not be able to do a revision. It would have to work there and then. Because of this, I had to force myself to make better decisions, which of course helped me improve as a mixer tremendously. I didn't have the luxury to second guess myself. I didn't have the luxury of saying, okay, I'll go and re revisit this tomorrow. I'll check with the artist. I'll check with this and this and that. And let's see, and let's just postpone, 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 postpone the decision making. No, I was there. I had to make a decision and I had to commit to my decision. Okay, we can export stems and do some small tweaks, but the mix as a whole would be really, really hard to change later on. And ultimately, this sort of commitment, this kind of passive pressure that you experience when you work in an analog studio, will make you grow as an engineer a lot faster than anything else. You'll learn a lot more about mixing, about audio, and about yourself. And ultimately, you will end up making better mixes over time, of course, because you're forced to make decisions quickly, on the spot, and for good. 
Number six, and this is more of a philosophical aspect of all of this. Historically speaking, technology always had a huge impact on our lives. Just in music, most records would not have been possible without the advancement of technology. Let's just think of Jimi Hendrix's crazy guitar sounds, which were defined by the wah-wah pedal and the old phosphase guitar distortion pedals. Let's think of the famous Led Zeppelin drum sound, which was solely created by one famous compressor. None of these would have been possible without new technologies that emerged back in the day. And I would even go as far and say that it was the technology that defined these genres. It was artists who discovered certain technologies and then used it to create brand new sounds. With this mindset, I actually think that dubstep and dance music is more authentic today than, say, jazz or blues, because these new genres use all of the new technologies to their fullest extent. However, and this is the big one, with the fast advancement of technology, I also think comes bigger responsibility. When we go back in history, that poor caveman dude who just came up with a brand new spear to hunt down an animal better or faster, would not have been able to destroy the whole planet with that one spear. However, today we have technologies that not only disrupt, but sometimes destroy whole industries. Nuclear energy is great, nuclear bombs not so much. AI-assisted driving is great, but will self-driving cars be good? We don't know yet. I think that a lot of people will lose jobs, and I don't think that that is a good thing, ultimately. I think mixing in the box is great, but I'm not sure that these new developments of AI mastering are good for us as a whole. Because I know that it is not going to stop here. I know that eventually we will have AI mixing, and who knows, maybe one day AI composing. And then what are all of us going to do? I think today we have a responsibility as a community and as people to draw a line in the sand and say, no, I'm not going to let this be taken away from me by new emerging technologies just because some people on a computer think that this is cool or this is something awesome that they can develop. Just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do it. At the end of the day, technology has always been about convenience. But I think if you look at history, we have come very, very, very far and our lives are already extremely easy, even just compared to our parents' or our great parents' lives. So I think now more than ever, it is time to think about whether new technologies are actually helping us or whether they are taking much more away from us. I hope you found this video interesting. I know it was a bit more philosophical than practical, but I believe that philosophy is an essential part of music and art as a whole. Let me know your thoughts and comments below and definitely join my private group on Facebook for more exclusive content. And check out martinmixing.com if you want to collaborate on your next project. Until then, take it easy and happy mixing.